talk about something a little controversial today, uh, which is critical thinking and why I think that critical thinking is a psyop. Now, what is critical thinking? Because everyone's talking about critical thinking. All right, we need more critical thinking. That's what we need. You're like, we need more. Like, every single person needs critical thinking. And then if every single person would do more critical thinking, then it would solve some whatever problem of the day that they've ginned up to, to solve. Because um, you do with problems, you solve them. Um, and the, the issue that I have with this is that maybe there are limits to cognition and People can't be critical thinkers, or some people can't. And then what good are you? Are you really solving the problem? Um, the other issue I have with this is the very individualistic approach, right? It's very, oh, I can, I can be a critical thinker, and then I can know things for myself. Well, I think the idea that you can know things for yourself is a psyop. Um, my buddy Jacob did a, did a stream about this and said, yeah, you, 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 can't, you can't think independently. <laughs> You know, and, and I think to some extent he's right, like you can't. The number of things and amount of stuff you'd have to know is insane. Um, I know a lot about computers, um, but I don't know how to run the electric grid that runs the computers, kind of important. Um, and oh, it's a you know, made up example, but be like, let's look at really anything, right? Like how much do you know about your health and what foods you should eat? And can you apply critical thinking to that? Can you? Are you sure? And do you think it's just a function of information? Because there's the hard problem of relevance realization that John Bravicki talks about. He's not wrong about that. Like that's a that's a hard problem. Jordan Peterson touches on it exactly the same concept. I don't think he calls it relevance realization, but touches on the same thing. Like, how do you know what to pay attention to at any given moment? And when you pay attention to it, how do you know that it's the right attention? And you know, it's the right amount of attention relative to all the other things that you have to pay attention to or could pay attention to. And it gets very confusing very fast. So how bombastic am I being when I say it's a PSYOP? Well, who's doing the PSYOP, right? And maybe we're doing it on ourselves because maybe our ego wants us to believe that we can do things that we cannot do uh, because then we can take credit for all kinds of things that happen around us even though they have nothing to do with us. And that's why I think critical thinking is a psyop, it's a trap. I, I don't think it's like, you know, the CIA or the NSA or, you know, three letter agency of the week or, you know, this secret cabal of lizard aliens or whatever. I've talked about the lizard people in the past and what I think about that. So I'll link one of those videos here. Um, but I, I think it is, you know, to some extent us fooling ourselves. Um, and I mean, you can put this in other frames, you can put it in a religious frame and, you know, this is a deceiver deceiving us, whatever. It doesn't, doesn't really matter at that point. Uh, a psychological explanation will do just as well as a spiritual explanation. There is a deception happening. Uh, we are not individuals unconnected from the world. That's just not how we are. And so when we think that we can use something like critical thinking what we're really saying at the end of the day is, if you thought about it the way I thought about it with the information I have, you'd agree with me and now we wouldn't have a conflict. The problem with that is that there are lots of problems with that theory. <laughs> it's not the way the world works. First of all, there's communication and going out. Your ability to speak your mind and actually express your ideas in a reasonable fashion that's acceptable to you is limited. Some people actually know this and they'll tell you, oh, I'm very bad at, at speaking my mind or getting across what I say. And I know it's not an interpretation problem. I know I don't have the words. My good friend Sally Jo has this problem. She talks about it all the time. She's gotten much better though, hanging out with, uh, with Manuel and I. Um, then there's the problem of, so that's your interpretation of your thoughts into words. Then there's the problem of the words, right? And how they are heard and received. Because I don't know about you, uh, but I certainly have problems listening to people sometimes, maybe not all the time, hopefully not, not often, uh, but sometimes I just 
whatever, I'm distracted, uh, I'm tired, I'm hangry, right? Um, whatever. And I miss some of the words. And, and then, then there's the problem of interpretation. Then I have to interpret your words. I don't have your context. I might have a lot of your context. I mean, like Manuel and I, man, we can talk about very deep subjects with very few words because we have so much context <laughs> over the past three, three plus years uh, that, yeah, we can, we can really dig into the depths of something. And then like we will go and hey, you want to talk about this subject? Yeah, we've talked about that for three years. Let's just do a live stream on it. And then we'll just take it and like expand with the words and do like 45 minute you know, back and forth on something without, without even a problem. Um, that took years of taking notes together and going through the notes together, by the way. Uh, so yeah, you can sync up your brain with somebody, but boy, does it take a lot of time, energy, and attention uh, to do that. When you're communicating with random people, you don't have that. And so their interpretation of what you said, aside from your articulation of what you said, not gonna match, right? It might be close enough that it doesn't matter. Sure, that happens all the time. That's how we, that's how we communicate at all, right? But maybe not, like maybe there's a there there. And so you have to be really careful, right? And that is some of the problem is that when you think like, oh, you know, I can just apply critical thinking as though it's like some kind of button you can press in your head or magical ability that you've trained yourself into, you're interpreting information that you have. You don't know what you don't have, right? So, you know, I'll, there's a lot of talk, for example, about communes. Communes don't work on average for reasons. We know what those reasons are. We have thousands of years of history with communes and writings about why they fail and how they fail. Uh, and they fail for the exact same reasons that a lot of other things fail, by the way. Some of that's function of scaling, which I talked about in another video. Maybe I'll link that here. It's a good video. Um, but we know this. But if you haven't actually done the research, and then even if you've done the research, if you haven't done thorough research, right, then you're just missing information. And now, even if you had some magical critical thinking function, how good is it going to be? See what I'm saying? So we're kind of fooling ourselves into thinking that we're gonna have this information, we're gonna have the right information. That right information is gonna lead us to the right answer, and that answer is gonna be like implementable, and we're gonna be able to communicate that answer to ourselves and to others. Because if you can only communicate the answer to yourself, are you, are you really doing anything, right? Because, and that's wrapped up sort of in action, right? I, I kind of define action as stuff outside of yourself. Like if it's just you, maybe, maybe it didn't happen. Right. So when we're talking about this mystical, critical thinking ability that we can just give to people, I don't think it's an ability that you can just give to people. I don't think if it was and you could give it to people that it would be universal enough to be useful. And it seems to rely on a lot of other things like access to information, your interpretation of information, the, the, how the information is communicated to you, when the information is communicated to you. Like all these things are factors because we're limited humans. And the problem is our brains, our egos in particular, want to deceive us. They want us to take credit for things that we didn't do, that we're not responsible for. Um, and they don't want to take responsibility for the things they are responsible for. Your egos are like, nah, man, that went wrong because of somebody else. I had nothing to do with that or nothing. My, my involvement that was limited, right? So really, the PSYOP is being done by you on yourself. This explains a lot of things, actually, if you think about it, um, because there's a lot of stuff where people just have these great conspiracy theories and they're just impossible. Because if you've ever worked in a large organization with lots of people, the odds you're going to run into somebody incompetent who's going to screw up whatever project you're on are like 100% uh, for very small numbers of people. I've been worked on startups, I've worked on Fortune 500s, Fortune 1000s, work on small projects, big projects, lots of people, little people, small projects with lots of people, <laughs> small projects with two people, right? Like the minute you get to four people, the odds someone's gonna screw something up 
are pretty high. And and that's why when you get into like the Illuminati and the Bilderbergers and all, it's like, nah, confidence isn't that. Even among the successful is not all that prevalent. And we fool ourselves into thinking that people are confident, rational actors, and they're generally not. And giving somebody who has a bad intent, critical thinking is not going to help you, right? Like, in fact, you don't want that person critically thinking, even if that magical thing exists, because they'll be better. And I don't want bad people to be better. I don't, I don't want to make bad people smarter. I don't want them to make, to make them more competent. I, right. I really want to focus on, are you doing good stuff? Or are you doing bad stuff? Ah, and that's not easy. I'm not saying that's easy. And like, that's it. it. It's not easy, but it can be done. And maybe that's the best use of your time, energy, and attention, right? Um, which, you know, ultimately, I, you know, I, I value the most, uh, especially when you're using it to watch my videos.